Okay, fifth grade, so now that you have completed your subtractive printmaking process printed multiple times, your Victorian row homes, you may be wanting to change some of what you see. So for instance, maybe you have some houses that are a little bit further apart and that bothers you. Maybe you smudged some ink up here and maybe that bothers you. Or maybe you just didn't line up your buildings across the bottom of your paper and there's this space, like they're almost floating. So there's a number of ways that you can fix this if you're unhappy with what you have. You can add steps to the ones that are floating. We can cut, you could go as far as to cut each one of these out individually and glue them down side by side. Or you could cut around the top of them it's completely up to you how much fixing you want to do. But I would say if it needs some fixing, you need to fix it. Don't just leave it. So this does need some fixing. I've got smudges here. I've got buildings that are floating. These buildings are essentially floating too because they're not sitting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these buildings out. And I think I'm going to leave a little bit of a white edge around each one. You don't have to do that. You can cut right against the ink if you want. But I'm going to leave a little bit of a white edge around each one of these. And I'm going to cut these out. And the bottom, I'm not going to leave a white edge as much as possible. So this one I'm going to cut out by itself. But these two are printed real nice and even next to each other. So I'm going to cut those out together. And then you need to decide, do you want to put it back on some white paper and just glue these down right across the bottom of your paper? If you wanted, you could have some that are a little bit higher and then you could add steps. You could get a little step pattern and you could get a gray paper. Line up your step pattern with the bottom of your paper. Trace around it with your pencil. And steps start wider and they get skinnier, or I'm sorry, shorter, as you get towards the top step. So if I had chosen to glue this one a little bit higher, I could add the steps here. And those steps are actually a little bit too big for this space. So I think what I would do is cut off this bottom step, just cut straight across, and just do two steps going up to the top. And then also what I can do is it still looks like it's floating sitting on these steps. So I need to add a foundation. So I could take my pencil and draw a straight line down to the bottom of the paper, move the steps and I could add some bricks. And a lot of these bricks are going to get covered up with the steps. But I'm just going to add some random bricks then I would use maybe a marker or colored pencils or maybe I could find a pink marker and I would outline these. If I had a pink marker, I might even color these bricks in with the pink marker just to show that there's a foundation, like a basement that this is sitting on. And then add the steps. And even with the steps, I could since I have this black line, I could add a black edge around the edge of the step so that it would match this black line here. And the line going across. And glue those down just like this. Now let's say you don't want to glue it down on white paper. Maybe you want to have a blue sky. So you could take your blue paper. You could get a blue paper. Oh, don't forget to write your name on the back. Write your name on the back. And then you could arrange your houses across the blue paper. You could use some construction paper crayons to add stuff in the sky like birds and airplanes and clouds. And I would recommend only construction paper crayons because they're going to show up on the colored paper a lot better than regular crayons. Now I don't have to finish this ray because I know the building's going to cover that up. 
And then you could arrange your buildings across your paper. And again, if you wanted to raise one up and do little steps, you could raise one up, draw the foundation again, and add steps. But I wouldn't recommend just adding steps because it does look like it's kind of sitting on this platform at the bottom. It looks kind of silly. Okay, maybe you don't want to do a daytime scene. Maybe you want to do a nighttime scene. So you take a white crayon, write your name on this, and then use um, the construction paper crayons again because that's what's going to show up the best on the construction paper. Use that to add some stars in the sky. Notice how I'm only drawing on the top part of my paper because that's really all you're going to see. And I could add a moon. Maybe I'll add a full moon. I could even add some clouds in the sky since it's nighttime. Sometimes you see clouds at night. And then you would glue your buildings down. Now if your, your buildings don't reach all the way across, you could always add a tree or a park bench or a street lamp or a street sign there if you like. So I think I'm going to do this because I really like the black in the background. So I think I'm going to keep this one. So once you decide and create your background, I want you to glue your buildings down nice and flat. And I want you to use a frame of glue. So put a frame of glue all the way around the edges, not just right in the middle. So I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap between some of my buildings. And yes, row homes are usually right next to each other, but this is your city. If you wanna change it up a little bit, you go right ahead. You can leave some gaps. Okay, so once you have your Victorian row home prints glued down nice and neat, what I want you to also know about the ink is sometimes when you put wet glue on the back of the ink, even though it's dry, it gets wet again the moisture from the glue seeping through the paper makes the ink wet again, unfortunately. So keep an eye on your hands. Once you're, you glued and you start pressing down, you might start to get ink on your hands and I don't want you to mess up anything. So keep an eye on that. If you get some ink on your hands, wash your hands off right away. Don't continue to touch things and mess this up. So now I want you to prepare this for presentation. So I want you to mat it twice. So you're going to choose a colored piece of paper to mat this on. And I have all nine colors of ink that we used. All nine colors are here in paper form. Now, should I use a black mat now that I've done a nighttime scene? No way, a black mat would do no purpose. So I need to pick a different color. I'm gonna choose a color of ink that I've used so that it looks like it ties together. And I think I'm gonna go with pink because I like the pink. So you're gonna choose a color to start to mat your piece on. And we're trying to, pre we're preparing this for presentation so that we can hang these up and they look nice. So you need to do a nice, neat job of gluing. You never put glue on the mat itself. You put glue on the back of your artwork, a frame of glue again. Don't put it too close to the edge or it squirts out and then you make a big glue mess and that's not ready for presentation. And then you're going to line this up to so find the middle Glue that down. Now the reason that I could put flip this over is because we're gonna mat this a second time. So, so then everybody's gonna mat on a large black paper. Your second mat. So you're gonna mat this twice. You're gonna mat this on a colored paper and you're gonna mat it on a big black paper. And this time on the back of the colored paper you're gonna put another frame of glue. Don't put the glue too close to the edge or it'll squirt out again. A nice frame. Then you're gonna flip it over and find the middle. Oops. You're gonna find the middle of the black paper, glue that down, and I moved my houses, so I need to glue those down again. Glue that down, so you have two mats. You have the colored mat in the background first, and then you glue it onto a nice big black mat. And make sure it's not crooked. This is for presentation, people are gonna be looking at it. And then the last thing to do is fill out a name plate. And I want you to use a Sharpie marker to do that. So you're gonna write your name in Sharpie, nice and neat. This is for presentation, so you want people to be able to read what you wrote. And then your teacher's name, your classroom teacher's name. So whatever fifth grade teacher you have, you're gonna write that under classroom teacher. 
And then this is probably gonna hang off, so you just need to put a line of glue across the top of your nameplate. And then on the bottom right corner, you can put it all the way over to the bottom right corner. You can put it underneath your artwork on the bottom right corner. And you're gonna glue that down, just like this, so that it's ready for presentation. So there you have your finished Irofoam Subtractive Printmaking Victorian Row Home. Good job, fifth grade.